Hey there. Uh, so I, I think this is going to have to be the last video tutorial in the series. Um, I'm currently in Savannah, and tomorrow actually I'm flying to Amsterdam uh, for the premiere of Sintel in Utre Utrecht. Uh, so I'm very excited, but uh, school has started, and my schedule is filling up. So I wasn't able to get to quite as much as I originally intended, but uh, I'm proud to see that you've made it all the way through to number 12, and uh, hopefully you found it useful. So in the last tutorial, I was talking about animation, just how to visualize, how to look at, at the animation data in our files. And because um, it can actually be pretty challenging just to see what's going on, you know, um, and to work with animation data once you start getting into a little bit more complex scenes. And I want to show you in this particular case something, it was a little bit more of a test case because it's uh, definitely an outlier. But here I've done the layout for the first scene. Um, this, was, this scene was cut. This is uh, the original fight scene that was going to uh, start off the movie with three bandits and Sintel. Um, now the rig has been updated since this, so it's a little bit broken. Her head is like uh, lolling a real, little bit. Um, but for the most part, it, uh, it survives. And if you notice, the actual length of the animation in this file, this single file, is one minute and 50 seconds. So it's a lot of work, um, a lot of animation in, in this one file. Um, and it can be difficult um, to, when you're actually working, um, to make sense of it all. One of the limitations of Blender, um, or just something sort of inherent about the way that Blender works, is that um, actions are a property of the object. So uh, you can't have multiple objects in a single action. And this, um, you know, became an issue a little bit with, uh, for example, Sinta here and the, all, well, actually all the bandits, all the characters in this scene have staffs. So, and even a staff changes ha hands from one character to another. And um, part of the challenge of setting that up is, is the constraints, the rigging side of it. But the other is managing the animation. Um, when you have a bandit who has a staff, um, what would normally happen if you had, you know, this uh, only includes channels button selected, is when you're working on the uh, bandit's body, you see the bandit's body. Um, when you're working on the staff, you only see the staff. And really, these things should be working in concert because they're completely integrated in, you know, the overall animation of, of the scene. Um, so, I mean, this is blocked. You know, this is my layout, so it's not actually animation here. Um, that's of any uh, worth, but um, you know, I was going through the process of setting keys and animating um, just really loosely, and um, so because I was struggling with with just organizing um, the animation, I talked to Allegorith online, and he implemented uh, a little feature that I thought was pretty obscure. Um, I mean, I don't imagine that too many people know about it, and it's this uh, this button right here. If you're in the dope sheet only include channels from objects in the specified group. So this is basically animation groups. And you can specify any group to uh, sort of filter what you're looking through, looking at in the dope sheet. So if I select Sintel's rig here, and I go into the object buttons, you'll see in the groups right here that uh, she's in several groups. And this one uh, both of them have this prefix AN, which is just what I used to specify, okay, this group is an animation group. AN underscore all characters, so it's just the characters, no cameras. Um, and here, it's just Sinto by herself. Um, so let me just show you all the animation first um, in the whole scene. Um, I'm just going to select everything. I don't know why I need to do that. All right, so... Um, <laughs> If you look at the, the dope sheet summary, it gets pretty dense, and I'm just going to scroll down. Lots of objects in this scene. Um, if I toggle a few of these down, you know, this is, uh, where's, actually, I was animating hands with empties um, for certain uses. Camera, root of Sintel, let's see, where are bandits? Anyway, I think you get the point. Um, surely we have bandits around here. Geo staff. 
So we've got staff separate from um, bandits. Jack simple proxy. Okay, so this is Jack's animation. Right, so it's not too bad, but uh, it's very easy to be overwhelmed. Um, you know, especially if you're scrolling through all this stuff and cameras are embedded. And if you notice, the uh, s the channel for Sintel's root is all the way up here, yet Sintel's actual proxy and hand channels are way down here. And currently there isn't a way to just reorder them. You can't click and drag. Um, and so navigating uh, and moving, you know, blocks of animation, you know, became extremely difficult to figure out how to do. You know, I was working with layers and that, and that kind of thing. Um, so, instead, um, to isolate things, uh, I'm going to take use those groups and use that to um, to just help me actually see what I'm doing. So, I'm just going to toggle this on. I've already got one of these groups selected, but I'm going to change it to Sintel. And then press home. And now, all we're seeing is the animation that I have determined is relevant to Sintel. So that includes Sintel's body. Yeah, here's all just relevant animation. Left hand, right hand, her weapon. And, you know, this may not be as elegant as whether, as if uh, all of these individual actions were actually one, you know, unified. But for, for most purposes, it sort of achieved that. Um, and one of the nice things is I can actually split this view and create another dope sheet with a different group. So here let's look at Smith. Smith's animation is very simple, apparently. Um, so we've got the root. He's just translating his uh, poses and the staff, and those are the three, um, the three different objects that needed animation. And because they're all here in the dope sheet, I can sort of uh, move all three at the same time without having to rearrange my view and find, okay, where where is everything? Um, so yeah, that, that's all I really wanted to share with you, um, and uh, just because uh, it ended up being very, very helpful, uh, especially with this scene, which got very complex very fast. Um, yeah, I, I guess that is it. Um, if you want, uh, send me, if you have very specific features or, or things that uh, you'd like to see demoed, I am interested in continuing this kind of short tutorial series. Um, but yeah, I, I hope uh, you found it useful. Thanks very much for watching.